Designing a scalable and economical media management workflow is one of the most important aspects of our ever-growing library of footage. From plenty of storage capacity to read and write speeds, all the way to backup and archival is a sign of a disciplined editor we all should aspire to. In this episode, we'll explore some options that might suit your stock video workflow. In the past years, as my video library started dangerously growing out of proportions, I was forced to start a disciplined media management workflow for the simple fact of running out of storage space and losing my mind. Couple that with having my shoots on several different external hard drives, not knowing what everything is, and you have a perfect recipe for a chaotic workflow. Media organization became a necessity. It's an ever-changing plan that needs to continuously adapt to various shoots, projects, client work, but at least is a plan. Obviously, you might have a completely different workflow, but here are some tips I'm using, which hopefully you might find useful. The first thing I do even before copying footage off my cards is to create distinct folders with the shoot name within my library. Since often I will have videos and stills from a shoot, I organize them separately within the main shoot folder. All my shoots live under a main parent folder organized by year. You can, for instance, categorize your shoots by date instead of name if that makes sense to you. Next, go ahead and copy your media to the respective created folders. Now that's out of the way, let's head to Resolve's media page which is dedicated for media management. Resolve has a convenient way of categorizing your shoots in bins, smart bins and power bins. Bins are exceptionally great to keep things organized for easy and fast media access. You can, for instance, separate your clips by camera type or any other factors that make sense to you. To create a new bin, right-click in the bin list, select new bin and give it a name. You can also create sub-bins which will be nested in their parent bins. You can sort your bins in the list by name, date created or modified and use a sort. Next, navigate to your footage location from the media storage list, select your footage and simply drag it to the bins you've created. It is worth noting that Resolve is not creating duplicate copies of the footage, but simply references to the actual physical files that exist on the storage location. Now, each clip will inherently come with a basic set of metadata depending on the camera manufacturer. Some more detailed, others only with the bare minimum like frame rate, codec and resolution. This is where investing time in adding your own custom metadata will prove extremely helpful later when you want to sort through your media for fast and easy access to what you are searching for and will greatly benefit the creation of smart bins. To add your metadata, simply select the clip or set of clips and enter your values from the metadata editor on the right. It is up to you how detailed you want to be in adding metadata to your clips. The rule of thumb is the more you add, the more specific your searches can be and more narrow your smart bins can be categorized. In return, this will speed up your workflow instead of endlessly scrolling through your clips to find something you're after. The metadata editor is organized in specific groups which can be switched from the menu above. As a stock media content creator, I found that the shot and scene metadata group offers the best options to enter specific metadata for my clips like people present in my shoots, keywords, time of day, environment and certain comments. So now that you added your own metadata, let's take a look at how to organize your footage by using smart bins, which provide a way to add custom rules to categorize your media. For instance, if you want to separate your exterior shots, right click in the smart bins list and select add smart bin. Title it exterior, select the shot and scene metadata group, then environment, contains and type exterior. Considering that you added the matching environment keywords previously, your exterior clips will be added to this smart bin. A new feature introduced in the more recent Resolve versions, the power bins let you add media you might want to share across multiple projects of the same database. For instance, stills, graphics, titles or audio tracks that you find commonly used across projects. So now that you have your clips neatly organized in bins, you are ready to do your pass at trimming your clips, creating your timelines, do your color grading and export your clips. Then once the project is wrapped up, we're ready to archive and clear the drive of any unused media. Again, a disciplined workflow will come in handy here as you can save lots of storage space and ultimately money. 
we'll be using Resolve's media management feature to archive our projects. You can use this feature for full project or timeline archival with disposal of unused media or transcoding clips from a timeline to another format. Let's take a look at how to archive the timelines from our project and eliminate any unused media. First of all, if you have grouped clips on the color page, grab a still from each in a PowerGrade folder, which you can then reapply in the archived project since any pre or post group grades will not be included in the archival. Next, make a mental note of your project level color management and camera raw settings and use the same ones for the archival project. Open media management from the file menu, click on timelines on top, then select copy. This will make sure that the duplicated clips will preserve their original source format like for instance B-RAW or R3D. Choose a destination location for your archive, preferably on an external drive where you'll want to keep your archives. Next, choose the timelines from your project you want to archive and from the copy, select the use media and trim keeping X amount of frame handles. This is where we can specify the extra frames on each end of our trimmed clips on the timeline in case you would want to do small adjustments later on. Entering 24, for instance, will add 24 frames beyond the in and out points of the clips on the timeline. And with that, note the difference in the trimmed project size compared to the one that's using the full source media. Leave everything unchecked except the project name subfolder to have everything saved within a folder with the same project name. Click Start to export the project. This will export all the trimmed timeline clips with the extra 24 frames on each end in their original source format, raw or compressed, and the selected timeline files in a DRT format. To validate the exported timelines, create a project with the same name append archived in the name so you know it's the archived version. Use the same color management settings as you had on the original project, including any possible camera raw changes. Then on the timeline page, click on the file menu and select import timeline or control command plus shift plus I. Navigate to the archival folder and select each DRT timeline separately you want to import, then click don't change if prompted to change the project frame rate. The timelines will preserve the edits and the color grades. If you had group clips in the color page, you will have to regroup the clips and apply the pre and post power grades you saved previously. Now you're safe to go ahead and delete the original media since you have a preserved lighter version backup of your timeline with only the used and trimmed source footage. Following the same workflow, you can archive your entire project with all the timelines included. The luxury of this method is that all project level settings like timeline, color space or camera raw settings are preserved. Click on entire project, then copy, choose a destination and just like with the previous method, select how you want your clips to be archived. Again, to preserve space, you can choose to archive only the used clips, keeping 24 frames handles on each end of the timeline clips. Click Relink to new files to have the project pointing to the copied and trimmed media in the new archive location, then hit Start. Your project will be relinked to the archived and trimmed media. This all might seem a convoluted process with not much instant gratification. You and I might be tempted to just bypass media management in our workflow entirely. I did that for a good amount of time and now it hurts. But as annoying as it seems to have a disciplined media management routine for each project, in time, when our media libraries grow to substantial sizes, your diligence will be rewarded with being able to quickly find what you need along with saving precious storage space on our drives. My name is Gabi Bukataro for Stocks United and thanks for watching this season on managing your stock media workflow. Hope you found useful nuggets of information and if you did, please leave a thumbs up, subscribe if you're not yet and I'll see you in the next one.